Good day everyone, I am Erika Emontano and I am going to discuss the continuation of results annotation of Morgaset Sucesos de las Isla Filipina which means events in the Philippine island which was translated by the early biographer Austin Craig. So before anything else, let's briefly discuss first what is results annotation of Morgan Sucesos de las Islas Filipinas. Indeed, it is one of the most important history of the Spanish colonization in the Philippines, published in Mexico in 1609 by Antonio de Morga. It was then annotated by Rizal with a prologue from Dr. Ferdinand Blomentreat. So who is really Antonio Morgan? So he is a Spanish conquistador, a government official, and historical anthropologist. He wrote the first formal history of the Philippines conquest by the Spain. Moving on, here are um, the parts or the continuation of the annotation of results on Morgan's book. So we have this um, passage. So in the paragraph, Rizal annotated that Morgan's distinction of different titles of the leaders during colonization. So in this passage, Morgan's version of history was that Filipino were of low born, people with slightly little knowledge in terms of war and weaponry. When in fact, according to the annotation of Rizal, way before the Spaniard came in the Philippines, Filipinos already have an, an economic trading system and governmental structure, as well as structural and high-quality raw materials traded in Eastern countries. So Morgan version of Spanish colonization to our Philippine land was distorted and misleading. It was said in Morgan's book that arrival of Legazpi in um, Philippine island was in conspiracy with Guetti and Salcedo, which in results annotation is a mistake and also the commemoration of patron saints was also a mistake. Thus, Rizal strive hard to publish his annotation regarding to a Morgan's version of Spanish colonization in the Philippines. So as what I have said earlier, in Morgan's version, he describes Southerners Filipino of being a barbaric people with different tattoos in their body, in which results direct defended that tattoos Filipino have is a sign of traditional belief in culture. And also in this passage, Rizal felt indignant in the terminology used by Morgan in describing how was the dissemination of areas in the Philippine Islands which he labeled as disrespectful and degrading, saying that it is like our Philippine Island was just a piece of object that is given to those who want it. Next, in this passage, Morgan emphasized that Salcedo was good enough that the Filipino people were keen enough to follow him in his ruling in the Philippine island. Next, this passage showed that according to Morgan, Filipinos were recruited to become a soldier to conquer Borneo and many other countries outside the Philippine archipelago. With this, Rizal annotated how Filipinos were forced to take up this challenging task of being a soldier, of how pitying and degrading it is to our motherland. And lastly, in this passage, Rizal annotated that Filipinos were again degraded as low-born believing that Filipinos were not used to artillery and weaponry when in fact long before the Spaniard colonization, Filipinos already have their own version of artillery. Thus, this version of Morgan's history is quite appalling to Rizal's annotation. Now, 
I have additional knowledge regarding our report, um, I mean, regarding the um, results annotation of Morgan's um, Sucesuas the Isla Filipina. So, in the biography of Antonio de Morga, his history is valuable in that Morgan had access to survivors of the earliest days of the colony and he himself participated in many of the accounts that he rendered. The book Sucesos de la Isla Filipina, the history of, narrates the history of wars, intrigues, diplomacy, and evangelization of the Philippines in a somewhat disjoint way. Modern historians, including Rizal, have noted that Morgan has a definite bias and would often distort facts or even rely on invention to fit his defense of the Spanish conquest. So Marga wrote that the purpose for writing Sucesos was so he could chronicle the deeds achieved by our Spaniards in the discovery, conquest, and conversion of the Filipino island, as well as various fortunes that they have from time to time in the great kingdoms and among the pagan people surrounding the islands. And taking this issue with the scopes of these claims, Rizal argued that the conversion and conquest were not as widespread as portrayed because the missionaries were only successful in conquering a portion of the population of certain islands. So another um, additional knowledge. So what leads Jose Rizal to, to Suceso de las Islas Filipinas? So Rizal was an earnest seeker of truth and this marked him as a historian. He had a burning desire to know exactly the conditions of the Philippines when the Spaniards ca came ashore to the islands. His theory was that the country was economically self-sufficient and prosperous, he entertained the idea that it had a lively and vigorous community. He believed the conquest of the Spaniards contributed in part to the decline of the Philippines' rich tradition and culture. He then decided to undertake the annotation of Antonio de Morgan's Sucesos de las Islas Filipinas. His personal friendship with Ferdinand Domintreat provided the inspiration for doing a new edition of Morgan's Sucesos. De uh, devoting four months research and writing and almost a year to get his manuscript published in Paris in January 1890. The result spent his entire um in the city of London at the British Museum's reading room. Having found Morgan's book, he laboriously hand copied the whole 351 pages of Sucesos and Rizal proceeded to annotate every chapter of the success. Sucesos, rather. So here are the summary. I will just give you an example of the summary of the results annotation of Morgan's um, Sucesos. He his extensive annotations of Morgan's work number new, less than 639 items or almost two annotations for every page. Rizal also annotated Morgan's typographical errors. He commented on every statement that could be nuanced in the Filipino culture practices. For example, on page 248, Morgan um, describes the culinary art of the ancient Filipinos by reading, they prefer to eat salt fish which begin to decompose and smell. Results footnotes, for him, this is another preoccupation of the Spaniards who, like any other nation in that matter of food, lose that to which they are not accustomed or is unknown to them. The fish that Morgan mentioned does not taste better when it is beginning to, roll, to rot rather. All on the contrary, it is bagong and all those who have eaten it and tasted it know it is not or ought not to be rotten. So what is the purpose of uh, Rizal's annotation of Morgan's book? So in his Rizal's dedication, he explained, among other things, the purpose of the new edition of Morgan's success. If the book succeeds in awakening in you the consciousness of our past, which has been obliterated, obliterated rather from memory, and in rectifying what has been falsified and calumniated, 
I shall not have labored in vain, and on such basis, little though it may be, we can all devote ourselves to studying the future. And lastly, according to Oserizal, to foretell the destiny of a nation, it is necessary to open the books that tell of her past, especially the true past. Thank you for listening.